y'all don't mind, let's go back to a time we really used to have church. We used to have a good time, praising the Lord, the spirit and the truth. I love them old church That old brother, song. pick up that old hymn book and you knew exactly what he was going to say. Sisters got happy, folks start patting their feet, clapping their hands and all of a sudden, he break off in a song, something like this. That show up in the natural every day of your life. And remember I warned you that if you don't learn to identify those that are around you, closest to you, or what assignment that they're on, that mass destruction can take place. You have to recognize when the enemy is stealing. You have to recognize when the enemy is destroying. And you have to recognize when the enemy's intent is to kill everything spiritually around you. So I took the liberty today to go to Mark 14, 4 through 5, and to show you what an assignment looks like. You may uh, recognize them from time to time in your life because normally it is an individual who says one thing but really has every intent on doing something else. The assignment is so detrimental on both parts that death and life lie in its hands. And if we go melancholy through the world acting as if everybody is our friend and everything is all right, we'll miss what the enemy is doing and miss what God is doing in our life. For there are always simultaneously two assignments that are taking place. The first assignment is God wants to bless you and wants to help you in spite of your circumstances. God says that I want to come into your life and give you a life so abundant that you won't be able to receive it. God is saying that I want to carry your burdens. I want to bear them. And I want to help you make it when you don't feel like you can go forward. God said, I came that you may have life. I never intended for you to walk around with your head down and your heart sorrowful, but I intended for you to have a good life. And I don't know about you, but <coughs> I want everything that God has for me. And when God says something is good, he speaks from his creative power. You remember God said that he made the heaven and the earth, and he said it was good. That he made the fowls in the air and he said it was good. And he made the thermos in the sea and he said it was good. Well, if God says, I want to make something good in your life, you ought to look like you're happy this morning and be able to shout amen because God's good is his creative power. Amen. Some of y'all looking like the devil told you to come here and raise hell while I'm preaching. The only thing you're going to do is make me preach an hour longer, sweat harder, and lose my voice. But if you want, if God's done something in your life, He's blessed you. Let the redeemed say something right now Amen. and shout glory to God. Amen. I know it's hard in this world. I know that it's rough because the enemy is always around messing with you. But if we'll focus on the good that God is doing in our life, we'll find ourselves knowing that good will always overcome evil. It is Jesus that is on His journey. He is nearing the end of his ministry. He is, he has picked out 12 men around him. And he is now about to have dinner and sup with them. And the text says, uh, in the text in Mark 14 and verses 4 and 5, and there came to him folk who were indignant with themselves. They were indignant because Christ was being blessed and prepared and being prepared for his burial. Now I want you to understand this very quickly. Christ is here and a woman comes to him of low self-esteem and low, low values and low moral systems. And he is allowing her to pour precious ointment on his body. He is allowing her to bathe and get him ready for his burial. Not to die for himself, but to die for your sins and for my sins. But as he is on his assignment, what is his assignment? It's to change the world. It's to save mankind from death, from eternal death. It is to redeem men back to God. And while he is on his assignment, the enemy creeps up around him and is full of indignation. It's just like when you're preaching sometimes and you're trying to change folks' hearts toward God. But the enemy have folks.
folk who are indignant, who will sit up in the service and look like they mad because folk receiving the word of God. I'm trying to tell you something right now. I'm just talking to three people the Holy Ghost that when God is on assignment and when the man of God is on assignment, folk ought to be happy and not full of indignation, but glad that somebody is receiving the word of God. They, she said there were some that were around that were full of indignation within themselves. In other words, your enemy, he's slick. He don't let you know he don't like you. He just sit and stare at you. While you're about to get your blessings, God is about to be served. God is about to receive a blessing from this person, a precious ointment. And they're looking at him. Who do he think he is? Why is he wasting that precious oil? In other words, the person that is around you that see God getting ready to do something in your life is upset because God is getting ready to do something in your life and they don't feel like he's doing nothing in their life. Let me say it again. When God blessed you with peace, there's some folks sitting around you that's mad and upset because you're not crying no more. There's some folks sitting around you that saw you get up when they thought you was down and out, but you got up and raised your head up and gave God glory in the house. And there's some folks smiling and saying, I'm glad to see you, but inside they're indignant that God would dare do anything for you. I stopped by to tell you that there's some folk that don't want to see God get glory. No, I give glory in this life. I was need some church folk in this morning. The church folk in the morning. I think I'm preaching preach right now. They were around Christ while he is getting ready to die for them to make the ultimate sacrifice full of indignation. Let me tell you something about church folk. Church folk will always cover their jealousy and their envy and their ignorance with some kind of spiritual scripture. Amen. Listen to the argument. Why are we putting all on you? We could have sold that precious oil and received 300 pence. And we could have took that money and fed the poor. Translation. Why should I give an offering? I'm going to take my money and do something for the poor. I, I, why, why, why should we do this? We could have done this. It sounds like a spiritual argument, doesn't it? It sounds like they're really concerned about the poor. But they're not concerned about the poor at all. And nor are they concerned about your situation. What they're concerned about is doing what they want to do, when they want to do it, and how they want to do it. And if it's not about them, they become indignant and find a spiritual reason to carry out their assignment. And that is to betray the work of the law. The objective, he says... He said, let me tell you something, the poor you always have with you. He said, but me, you won't always have with you. What is it to you that this woman is doing something for me? What is it to you that brother, sister, so-and-so is going to church? Why are you calling them, telling them not to go to church? What is it to you if somebody's giving God glory? Why are you looking at folk when they're shouting amen? What is it to you if somebody thinks that that's a good man? What, why does that bother you so much? What is it to you if God blesses my house? What is it to you that God lifts me up? What is it to you that God does something for somebody else? Why does that bother you? The answer, my friend, is that some folk are on assignment. When they're on the assignment, they don't care. They don't care what the ultimate goal is. Their main objective is to steal and to kill and destroy. Their main objective is to cause havoc in your life and to cause you to have pain and stress and drama in your life. Their main objective is to lie on you. Their main objective is to make folks see you different and you can beg them, you can plead with them, but that devil is on assignment. But praise be to God, God is on assignment also. Yeah, and I thank God to carry out his assignment. Y'all say amen. The devil is a liar. Everybody's trying to hurt you. They hurt you deliberately. They hurt you on purpose. They, help, they hurt you in duty. They disguise themselves. They got around you. They tried to take you out. But praise be to God. He said, what is that to you? Oh, man. His objective then is always to be there for the people of God. To redeem them, those who want to, re who want to requit their, his decision. But God says it's not so. I don't know about you, but I had times in my life where I didn't do what I needed to do. And I looked around, there was somebody right beside me that was helping me mess up my life. And I called him a friend, 
I call him a buddy, but what he was doing, he was on assignment, and his job was to mess me up. And I didn't recognize it, and before you knew it, he had carried out his assignment. But God has an assignment. Got up early one Sunday morning. I mean, got up, got up from the grave early one Sunday morning. He died one Friday, and am I right about it? He took my sins from me. He washed me, and he made me whole. Gave me a new name, absolved above all names. I'll tell you, it's Jesus. He's Emmanuel. You might not want to praise him, but I praise him by myself. I'm so glad he lifted me. I'm so glad I was seeking deep in sin. But that joker was on assignment. But God, love lifted me. And when nobody else could help, love lifted me. You need to recognize that in this text, there is one that is on assignment. His assignment is to disguise himself as a friend. You find that in John 13 and verse number 17, he deliberately is sitting at the table. John 13 and verse 27, the Bible says, after he has supped. In other words, your enemy is so nasty, he probably eating with you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Have you ever had somebody you done fed backstab you? Uh, Y'all ought to say amen. I mean, have you ever had somebody you done walk hand in hand with, you done done stuff for, and they look at you like a snake and bite you dead in the hand that fed them? Have you ever had somebody turn on you that you just got through communing with, that you just sat with and prayed with, you just cried with, you helped, you supported every way you could, and that snake was on assignment and nothing you could do to stop him from biting you? Yeah. The Bible says that in this text in John 13, it's the same scenario that, that the Bible says that Satan entered in him. And Jesus said to him, that did thou do it, do it quickly. What you talking about? You need to recognize that there's some folk around you that the enemy has looked at and said, you know what? I believe Leanne will be a good target to use today to get old Tiffany. I think I'll enter in her. And then uh, uh, Jesus looked at him and said, now, now watch the two assignments about to take place. Satan will enter to your friend. Whether it's Tiffany, whether it's Brother Hamilton, we're going to get Leanne. Oh, yeah. Now Leanne looks and she recognizes that the devil and got in them. He ain't brother him. And he's coming after them. Look at your neighbor and say he's coming after them. Yeah, yeah. But notice, Jesus doesn't get upset. He doesn't cuss them out. He doesn't run from them. He doesn't, he doesn't start talking about them. He just looked at them and said, that that thou doeth, do it quickly. In other words, don't you be afraid of folk who are on the side. Because at the same time, God is on assignment too. Yeah. And what you need to tell folk, if you're going to jump, jump. If you're going to move, move. You want to bust, well, bust a move. And God I say, amen. Look at them and say, bust a move. Look at this watch. Amen. You hear somebody talking about you, laughing at you, tell a bust a move then. Amen. And let me tell you something, God don't put enough fight in all of them. We ain't worried about nobody hitting us either. Am I right about it? And to be the last, you better have a better keep it a spiritual battle. I wouldn't put my hands on them. All y'all look like y'all can fight. Amen. Amen. There is no fear of the assignment that the enemy is on because Christ is on, on the assignment. He's closer to his assignment. He said, you better hurry up because I'm already through with mine. Y'all all right. I got I got to find, uh, sister came with me. I got to find three people that they just seeking the word of God. <clears throat> There's something happening in your life right now. You need to listen to this. There's something happening in your life right now. And it looked like the enemy winning. It looked like the enemy done ate with you and about to do you in. But here's the problem. God is saying, I'm almost done with your blessing tomorrow. So whatever the enemy is trying to do to you, he better hit me up. Because you're about to get to your blessing. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You, 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 so you need to tell somebody that's trying to bring you down, you better hurry. I went to church yesterday. Right. Uh, amen. You better hurry. God, get ready to bless. I know you'll be full of indignation, but let me tell you something. I mess with my, I, I mess with, I tell them, you know, God, God's getting ready to bless me. They get, they, they look like this. <laughs> you can see it all in their eyes. Whenever y'all start saying amen, some of them be, they be looking like this. <laughs> watch, watch this. Quick. So can somebody shout amen right now? Amen. Now, now two devils didn't say a word. They, they're not, here's the thing. They're not supposed to. Uh -huh. Giving you praise or saying 
God bless you is not the assignment. Folk on your job assignment is not necessarily help you get promoted. They'll probably help you get demoted. The problem is we keep looking for folk who are on assignment to help us, but that's not the assignment. You gotta learn to look for folk who God has assigned to help you. Because God assigned somebody to help you even if they don't want to help you. Jonah didn't want to help never. But God put him on assignment. He said, you will help the people of Nevada. Jonah said, they're no good. They're not worth saving. God said, you going down to Nevada. Jonah said, I'm going in a ship and I'm going the opposite direction. God said, I'll raise hell in your life and I'll swallow you up with this fish and I'll spit you out. He made a three-day journey in a day to help them folk just like God said he did. And there's somebody that's messing with you that God is using. They may not want to help you, but when God get through with them, they're going to be right where they're supposed to be. Talking about, hey, amen, brother, help them do your job. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We serve a powerful God. And so here's your problem. Here's your problem, Kitty. Here's your problem, Brother Spencer. Stop looking at folk who are on the wrong assignment and start looking for folk in your life who God has assigned to your life that bring you an abundant life that move you toward your destiny and don't worry about the devil because God's almost through. Man. Oh, my goodness. goodness. Praise God in hell. Let me help me get through here. Not only was he deliberate, but it's an assignment of duty. He has no intention on slowing down. She has no intentions on loving you. He has no intentions on loving you. His job is to take you and make you go crazy. His job is to make you feel insecure. His job is to take the very best of you and trash it and stomp on it and spit on it and crucify it. But he does not know that in crucifying me, God will raise up a new me. For he has said, if I bear my cross, he said, if I be lifted up, I draw all men under me. I believe that as soon as you bear your cross, God's going to lift you up. Love's going to lift you up. Sometimes you got to let the enemy have his assignment because in his assignment, God's going to bless you in the resurrection of a better person than you were in the first place. Yeah. Every, every person that I've met that's been on assignment called me stupid, yeah. called me nigger, dumbest nigger in the sixth grade. They called me a hypocrite. They called me one thing or another. I thank God for you. Right. Oh yeah, because had you not caught me in my fallacy, had you not told me where I need to work, I would never be graduated next year with a doctor's degree <laughs> in clinical psychology. Yeah, you call me this, and you call me that, but you gonna call me Dr. Hamilton Prince, hey, amen. Yeah, you gonna call me Dr. Hamilton, I'm gonna tear you up, cause if you can call me all that other stuff, you gonna call me Dr. Amen. 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 I earned that to I took enough hell from you. I stood fast, I stuck my head in God's head, and I earned this blessing from God. Y'all wanna say amen? amen. You wanna thank God for every devil that was on the assignment that came in your life. Every illness that made you eat right. Some of us won't eat right till we get told we got some kind of illness. Now you know you sick. You need to eat some soup. You should have been eating soup. You need to stay off of the, stay off the carbohydrate. You should have been off the carbohydrate. If it wasn't for the flu, you can't be eating that stuff. Thank God for the flu. Y'all wanna say amen? amen? I'm trying to help so I got five people to understand. All right. All right, so, so ultimately, the assignment of Judas was to betray Christ. It is foretold in Zechariah 11, 11, 4 through 14. We find a prophetic warning that Jesus would be betrayed by one of the twelve. In fact, the Bible says in Luke 22 and verse number 23 that Satan entered into Judas. In case you got the wrong Judas. The one whose name, surname is Iscariot, who was numbered with the twelve. So the Judas that we're talking about is the Judas that God himself had picked out. God put him over the treasury. God put him in position. What you talking about, preacher? There are some Judases that are in your life that God put in your life. That God positioned to help you with your disposition and move you to a greater position in your life. And 
gift you one of all the Judas's in your life, you will miss the blessing that Judas ultimately brings to your life. Oh, but y'all, y'all, this is too, this too heavy. This is too much for you. This is too much, y'all say amen. If it's all right, somebody shout, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, no, thank you, Jesus. We might get through a little bit. Early. At first, I thought we were going to be here for the long sermon. But then, y'all, y'all got to help me out a little bit. Amen. Then tell me, teach me a bit, and I go on and preach. And I said, it is important and incumbent for you to understand that when Judas in Matthew chapter 26, verse 15 through 16, when he takes 30 pieces of silver, he takes the 30 pieces of silver because when he conferred with the Sanhedrin council, that was the price for a worthless slave. Mm. And so Judas says, what will you give me for backstabbing the preacher? What will you give me for undermining the kingdom of God? What will you give me for my lackadaisical attitude toward the kingdom of God? What will you give me for me talking nasty behind folk back? What will you give me for me scattering the flock and everybody quit going to church because it's too much drama? What will you give me? And Satan says, I'm only going to give you 30 pieces of silver, enough not for a good slave, but a wounded, worthless slave. In other words, you're doing all this mess, causing all this drama, and you're not even getting nothing worth, worth the hell you're about to go through. And you know the end of the story when Judas gets the 30 pieces of silver, he recognized culturally what it meant, and he threw it down. Because he realized then that they, they certainly had played and used him. But sadly enough, Judas went out and hung himself. The Bible says his guts bust wide open. Well, preacher, what are you... What are you trying to convey to me in this lesson? I'm trying to tell you that everything that God conquers and everything, I'm at, put that phone up, that's the nice way, it's a nice time, put the phone up, sir. Put the phone up, put the phone up. Every time that the enemy, every time that the enemy steps into your life, he steps into your life because God has already blessed your life. Amen. Y'all think about that. Whenever you see the enemy Moving on assignment in your life. It is by order he can only move when he sees the blessing in your life. How many of you right now are going through something in your life right now and can't understand why? Could you raise your hand very quickly? Yeah. You're going through something right now. You're tired. You're frustrated. You okay, the good news is, watch this. The reason you're going through what you're going through because God is about to bless you and the other side of the enemy is upset and active. You're going through what you're going through because your blessing is on the morrow. All you've got to do is have faith today and keep your hand in the Lord's hand. Amen. Lift up your hands, O ye gates, and enter into his house with thanksgiving. Know ye not, it is the Lord who made us and not we ourselves. Amen. God's doing this thing. Amen. God's getting ready to bless you. You ought to stand up right now and shout thank you, Jesus, for what God is about to do in your life on tomorrow. He's on the sound. Amen. So as you leave here, I want you to recognize whenever you can identify the devil moving, start smiling. Because it means that Satan's seen God work. And the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, 16, around the second verse, there was a great door of opportunity open in front of me. And I looked around, the devil was sitting there right by that door of opportunity. If you feel like you're this close, to your breakthrough, if you feel like you're this close to something better, but it's getting harder, it's getting hotter, it's getting rougher, you're getting tired, you lift up your head and say, thank you, Jesus, because you're almost there. You're almost where you need to be. Amen. You ought to shout, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. The heart of the road, again, simply as an indicator that the old pale horse is riding behind because God's conquered something for you already, Revelation 6 and verse number 2, Revelation 6 and verse number 8. I conclude by saying to you that we have been rescued from the work of the devil before he does his assignment. That God rescued us from the dominions of darkness and he's already transferred us into the kingdom of his son which he loves. 
I stop by and I submit to you that God has already fixed it for us. That God says his word and he gave himself for our sins that we might be delivered long before you messed up. God had already made up. You know how to say amen. amen. I want to tell you that before you got hungry, God has placed food on the other side. Amen. Before you got broke, God has placed an abundance on the other side. Before you are lost, God has placed salvation. Ephesians chapter 1, 1 through 6. Before the foundation of the world. And the question this morning is, do you want to be saved this morning? Amen. Want to be saved this morning? You're not a member of the Lord's church. You become a member of the Lord's church by hearing the word of God. Not by no, confess, no confession alone. Confession is necessary. But they lied to us. But that's okay. Because it pushed us closer to knowing the truth. We now find out you can't just say come into my heart and be saved. Because there is no biblical example. We realize now that the Bible is right. The Bible says in Romans 10 verse 17. So then faith come by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. But stop. Wait a minute. Let me put some Bible in it. It didn't say just come. It said come. Which means they continue to come. That they came in the script. They're still coming that way right now. And if you didn't come that way, you came the wrong way. Faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Am I right about that? Does not come by some experience you had on the highway. Does not come from heartache. Faith come by hearing the word of God. Man. When you heard the word, do you believe the word this morning? Do you believe that God is bigger than the assignment of the enemy? Man. Do you believe that God is on assignment in your life? I want you to know that you believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. And that you're ready to be obedient to God and submit yourself to God. God already has salvation in front of you. All you got to do right now is give me your hand, God, your heart. And put it baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And in your obedience to God, along with your grace, along with your faith, along with your repentance, God will bless you with salvation. But if you're going to just believe in him and not have any type of action of obedience to him, it's just lip sync in your life. How do you know? Mark 16. Oh, let me stop a minute. Let me. Wait a minute. Let me put some Bible in. Some Bible. Y'all gonna help me now. We're gonna say, wait a minute. Let me put some, Let me put some Bible. Bible in. He said, Mark 16 and 16, he that believeth and is baptized. When somebody says you don't have to be baptized, you tell them, and is baptized right. shall be saved. He that believeth not will not get baptized. If you believe what I preach this morning, then why don't you get baptized? I don't get baptized and I don't really believe what was preached. He that believe it, Mark 16 and 16, and is baptized shall be saved. He that believe it not shall be damned. Luke 13 and 3, now I tell you, except ye repent,